Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at finding area. Okay, you, with our basic shapes are squares, rectangles, triangles, and parallelograms, and really just looking at using the formula. That's what we're going to do in this uh, video. So starting off with a square, okay? So let's say you're given this particular example. You've got a side length of four centimeters. Uh, the formula for the area of a square and a rectangle is, of course, length times width. This is not in your log tables. It's one of the only ones that is not. So you must know this one off by heart. And any time you are dealing with an area or volume question, the minute you identify the shape involved, write the formula out in full. And by in full, I mean write A equals L times W. And I'll explain exactly why that's really important to write out in full, including the A equals uh, later on, because when we get into some harder questions, you'll see how useful it is to have that written out in full and how your knowledge of working with equations will really, really help you with understanding what to do. OK, so this is our square. And of course, there is our formula. So now we're going to fill it in. Obviously, you don't know what the area is. That's what we're looking for in this question. But we do know what the length is. The length is four. And the width, although it's not given to us because it's a square, we know the length and the width are the same. So it's going to be four times four. So we get that it, the area of this square is, of course, 16. And don't forget your uni units. Centimeter by centimeter, of course, is centimeter squared. Uh, any area is always going to be a squared unit. OK, so make sure you have that in. OK, so now we'll move on to a rectangle. All right. And rectangle is going to be very similar because it is, of course, the very same formula. So immediately when you identify the shape, write down the correct relevant formula in full. So A equals L times W. OK, so we're looking for the area of this shape uh, again. Obviously, we don't know what A is. So write A uh, as A equals length is, of course, 12 times the width, which is 6. OK, so 12 times 6 is 72. And don't forget your units is centimetres squared. Right now we're going to jump to questions where we are given the area, but we're looking for a missing length. OK, so the first question I'm going to give you is this one here where we have a square. And again, the first thing you're going to do is the minute you identify that we're talking about area because we're given it then write down the correct relevant formula for the area of a square. And that is, of course, A equals L times W, length times width. OK, this time, and this is why it's important to write the formula out in full, we have our A equals, not just the L times W part, A equals L times W. This time we can fill in for the A. We know the area is 121. The length, however, and the width, well, we can see there the width is x. And of course, in a square, the length has got to be x as well. They've got to be the same. So what we end up with there is x times x. OK, um, and if it's not obvious straight away what number you would multiply to itself to get 121, then rely on your algebra. X times X, of course, is X squared. So X squared is equal to 121. How do you undo a square in an equation? Well, the only way to undo a square in an equation is to square root both sides. So square when you square root a square, you get then just the X on its own. And then square root 121 gives us 11 centimeters equals X. OK. And that's the answer. 11 times 11, of course, is what gives us the 121 centimetres squared. So that's how you would tackle a question where you're given the area, but you're working backwards, if you like, to find the missing length. Let's try a rectangle type question. So uh, in this question, we have 128 squared, centimetres squared is the area of the rectangle. Uh, and this time we're looking for the missing length. OK, so again, the minute we clock that we're given area, we're talking about area formula, the area of a rectangle, get it written down in full straight away. 
and now we'll fill in the bits we know. This time again, we know the area is 128. The length is x in this context, or we don't know it in other words, times, and then the width, of course, is 8. Now, how do we then get x on its own, or in other words, how do we solve in order to get what this value is going to be. Well, if you remember how you deal with your simple equations, all right, in order to get rid of a times by eight, to get x on its own, which is what we want, we want x equals, we divide by eight on the right-hand side, and if you divide by eight on the right-hand side, you've got to divide by eight on the left-hand side. So that tells us exactly what we need to do in order to calculate the width. So we get 108 divided by eight, works out to be 16. So 16, don't forget your units, centimetres is the missing length. So fill in your formula and then your knowledge of algebra will help guide you towards the next step in what to do in order to solve to what the operation is because you're always going to strip it away to get the value, to get the unknown on its own and then that will guide you to know what to do on the other side. So we divide by 8 on both sides and we get x is equal to 16. Okay, moving on now to a triangle. Now, with this triangle, we do have the formula for the area of a triangle in your log tables. If you go to your log tables on page 9, you can see that here, with, beside the triangle, obviously, we have A equals a half A H. Now that's not exactly the way we normally deal with the formula for area of a triangle, but it does help me remember what the area of a triangle is. All we're given is A equals a half A H, but if you look what A is, A is here and it is standing for the base of that triangle. H is here and it is of course the perpendicular height of that triangle. So although that formula is in the log tables. It's not exactly in the way I like to work with it, but it does remind me as to what the formula of a triangle is. The formula of a triangle is A equals a half times base times height. And that's the way I'm going to write it out for myself. A half base times height. And again, write it out in full as soon as you've identified that that's the shape that we're talking about and we're looking for area. So we can't fill in anything for the A because that's exactly what we're looking for. A half, now this will always stay a half, so follow the formula exactly. A half stays a half, but the base of this triangle is of course 12 times the height of this triangle is of course seven. So we end up with a half times 12 times seven, and we work that out, we get 42. And don't forget centimeters squared. Okay, so let's have a look at a question where we are again dealing with a triangle, but a missing length. <clears throat> so this triangle, we're given the area 63 centimetres squared, we're given the base, but we're looking for the height. So as before, as soon as you've identified the shape involved, we're talking about area, get the formula written down in full. Half times base times height. Okay, so this time we know what the area is. The area is, of course, 63. A half will always stay a half. Times, the base is 14 in this particular example. And the height is just written as H. We don't know what that is, in other words. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work this bit out, a half times 14. Well, a half times 14, or a half of 14, is of course 7. So I'm going to write that underneath that. The 63 will stay here on the left-hand side, times by the H. So now it becomes a lot clearer as to what I need to do. If 7 times something is 63, or in other words, think back to your working out with equations, if you want to get H on its own, how will you get rid of the times 7? Well, you'll divide by 7. If you divide by 7 on the right-hand side, you've got to divide by 7 on the left-hand side. So we get 63 divided by 7, which is 9. That gets rid of that. 
pages on its own then so the height is nine centimeters and that's how we tackle missing lengths with triangles okay i'm going to move on now to parallelograms all right so again we do have a formula for this in your log tables so if i show you the log table this is on page eight in the log tables here we have a parallelogram obviously and we have a equals a h so there's your formula for the area now again it's not written exactly as i would like to work with it but it will remind me of exactly what the formula is because a again is standing for the base and h again is standing for the height so the way i like to use it is a equals base times height all right it's just a lot more user friendly to write out that way and again the log tables although it's not written clearly in that format it is enough to remind me what the area of a parallelogram is a is the base h is the height and always when you have two letters written together like that it means times okay so the area of a parallelogram is base times height so in this question where i'm going to work out the area Again, I don't know what the A is, it's what I'm looking for. Base is eight and the height is seven. And again, it's got to be a perpendicular height, just like with the triangle, okay? So make sure it's not a diagonal length that you have. Make sure you are getting the perpendicular height, okay? So eight times seven works out to be 56. Don't forget your units, centimeters squared. Okay, so now we'll jump to a missing length type question with parallelograms, all right? So it's obvious we're given the area is 144 centimeters squared. We are given the base, but we are looking for the height. So as always, the minute you identify the shape, you identify its area, we're gonna write down the correct relevant formula. So A equals base times height. All right, now let's start filling it in. Do you know the area? We do, of course, so it is 144 for the area. The base is 16 and the height is written as H. We don't know, so we'll put it in as H uh, as it is given to us in the question. So now, how are you going to get H on its own? Again, remember back to your basics, your simple um, solving simple equations. Uh, in order to figure out what the height is, we need to get rid of the times by 16. And the only way to get rid of times 16 is to divide by 16. And if you divide by 16 on the right-hand side, you've got to divide by 16 on the left-hand side. So that will get rid of that and give you the H on its own. And 144 divided by 16 is, of course, uh, 9. So we end up with 9 centimetres is our answer there. Okay, so now we've looked at the basic shapes and how to use uh, your answers to find missing lengths and so on. We're now going to have a little look at some other type of shapes. So let's take a look at this one here. So key with this one, this is what we would call an irregular shape because it's not one of your basic shapes, your square, your rectangle, your triangle or your parallelogram that we have formula for. OK, so when you're dealing with irregular shapes, what we're going to do is we're going to look to break them up into the shapes that we know we have formula for. So with this particular example, what we can do is we can break up this shape here into a square and a rectangle. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that one A and I'm going to call that one B. And I'm going to work out the area of each of those separately and then just add my answers together at the end. Now, let's take shape A. So it does look like a square, but let's just verify if in fact all the side lengths are equal. And this is what you want to be very careful for in a, in a regular shape like this. Check that you do have the correct dimensions. All right. So it's Either way, whether it's a square or a rectangle, we know that the formula is A equals L times W. And again, always, the minute you identify this as an area type question, you identify the shape, get your formula written down in full, okay? So we don't know what the area is, but the length we can see quite clearly is four times. 
the width. Now the width, well, it's not given to me very clearly what the width is, but there must be enough information in the question for me to be able to figure out what that length or, well, technically width, what that width is. So if you look here, if that whole thing is 10 and this bit up to here is 6, then that means that this bit here must also be 4. OK, so just make sure that you do, in fact, have the correct dimensions. It's the one little tricky bit about working with the area of these irregular shapes. So now four times four, that gives me an area of 16 centimeters squared. And that's that shape there. OK, so now we're going to go on to shape B. And again, shape B is a rectangle. So get the formula written out in full. A equals L times W. We don't know what the area is, of course, but uh, now we're going to have to figure out what the length is. Now, again, there's the length here. OK, that's what we want. We want the length and the width of that shape, shape B. Now, the length's not given clearly, but I must have enough information in the question to be able to figure out what that length is. And if I know as far to here is eight and obviously the length from here to here is four, then that must mean the total length is eight plus four, which is 12. So the length is 12. And again, you've got to be just very careful that you have the correct dimensions for the shape that you are looking at. And that's the shape B that I'm looking at. So the correct length is 12. The width is given to me nice and clearly, which is six. So I have 12 times six, is 72 centimeters squared. So now to get the total area of that full shape, we will add 16 and 72 together. And of course we get 88 centimeters squared. Okay, so now we'll move on to another type of irregular shape. So here we go. And again, what we want to look to do here is break this up into the shapes that we know what we have the formula for. So squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms. So what I can do with this one is I can break it off here. And then, of course, what I have is we'll call this shape A on top, which is a triangle. And this shape B on the bottom, which, of course, is a rectangle. Now, let's have a look at shape A first, okay? Well, shape A, of course, is a triangle, as I said. So get down the formula for the area of a triangle straight away. Now, be careful. Uh, the full formula is A equals a half times base times height, remember, okay? So filling this in, we don't know what the area is, but we have a half times the base now although that base isn't given clearly that length there must be the very same as that length down here so the base of the triangle must of course be 10. now the height the height of the triangle now i just want that height there so again, it's not given to me clearly, but I must have enough information to be able to work this out. So if this 12 centimeters is the full length, and I know this length here is six, then this length here in blue must be six, okay? So six at six must be making the full length 12, which is what I was given. So now I know the height of the triangle is six. And again, this is usually the area where pupils go wrong. So be very careful. Make sure you do have the actual base of the triangle and make sure you have the height of the triangle. OK, don't just take the numbers that are given to you. You've got to make sure your dimensions match. So now we have a half times 10 times six, which works out to be 30 centimeters squared. So now we'll have a look at shape B. So shape B is a rectangle. So get the formula written out in full for a rectangle is A equals L times W. Uh, we're looking for the area. 
we have the length though nice and clearly given to us which is 10 times and the width as well is nice and clearly given to us when we're talking about that rectangle so the the width is six so a equals 10 times 6 is 60 centimeters squared and now to get the total shape add your two answers together we get 30 plus 60 is 90 centimeters squared okay the last example i want to do with you uh, is one where we are asked to find an in-between area okay so in this question I want to work out the area of this shaded region here okay now key tip with any in between areas and that is get the area of the larger shape and subtract the smaller shape okay all right and obviously we're talking about the area okay so get the area of the larger shape and subtract the area of the smaller shape okay so in this case the larger shape is of course a rectangle okay that larger shape the outline the larger shape is of course a rectangle so it's going to be a rectangle, the large rectangle, subtract, and the area of the smaller shape, in this case, is also a rectangle. So we'll do the larger shape, the larger rectangle, subtract the smaller rectangle. So the area, of course, of the larger shape is going to be a, a equals L times W. The smaller shape is the same formula, A equals L times W. The area is going to be the length of the larger shape is going to be 22 times 12. Okay. And the area of the smaller shape is going to be A equals, and this time 18 times 8. Okay. So 22 times 12 is 264. And 18 times 8 is 144 so 264 take away 144 is going to give me my answer so 264 take away 144 works out to be 120 centimeters squared so any type of question that is looking for any in-between area always do the area of the larger shape subtract the area of the smaller shape.